Yeah, g'day guys. Now I recently added a whole bunch more storage space, but I made a real mess of just throwing stuff in. So I'm gonna start adding a bit of structure. Of course, as soon as you talk about draw organization, the chorus starts screaming Gridfinity. And don't get me wrong, I like Gridfinity. I think it's a great idea. And I think I'm gonna use some of it, but I don't think you need to overdo it. As you can see, I took my first shot at printing Gridfinity before I got my new Bamboo Labs printer. Well, this came out kind of weird. The green filament I was using was some old stuff that a mate of mine had given me, and it's become very brittle. Luckily, I caught that a piece had broken off. There was only like a half a meter bef before it ran out of filament. I paused the print, switched out to some yellow, which, of course, I didn't get it, didn't really purge very well and finish the print like that. Um, for storage it'll do fine. Looks like I didn't purge the black that I was using beforehand either that well. But it's gonna be a big improvement on having my ER25 collets just bouncing around in a drawer. Even though I've had a 3D printer for years, I never really realized just how hygroscopic uh, plastics are. That seems to be a big deal to improve print quality. I think my new hobby is going to be drying out silica gel. Now to my understanding, these get 110 degrees for about two hours. I found this model for desiccant tubs somewhere on the internet. I really like these build plates, these magnetic ones. Bit of tree support to remove. This is now the lid for that desiccant holder printing. God, look at this. Fine detail. That's fantastic. One of the extremely cool things about these Bamboo Labs printers is that they offer this AMS, like auto filament changer. It takes like four slots. You can even daisy chain multiple units if you need multiple colors. Unfortunately, mine's developed an issue. When you put in filament, you should be able to push, just push it in and it'll auto feed, auto detect and auto feed. But that's not happening with mine. It's not pulling it in. And it's given this re red failure light. Now, unfortunately, this is happening the same on all four. So I did all the troubleshooting steps for things like, you know, clogged filament and stuff like that. It wasn't an issue. So Bamboo Lab Support decided to send me a new controller card. Now to pop off this unit, you just need two fingers inside and that should release the Bowden cable at the back. And then the second thing is just the electrical connector. Right, let's go change that card. Now one thing that really is impressive with Bamboo Labs is the quality of their technical documentation. They've got a wiki which describes the disassembly and installation of basically every component with troubleshooting steps and everything else you might need. It's very easy to remove the guts of this uh, AMS module. It's just two screws. You sort of got to tweak this golden tube removal bit to get it over the lip. And don't pull it out too hard yet because there's a cable at the back. Actually, there's two cables, power and bus cable. So let's pop them out. So from the back, you can see the basic functionality. Each of the four primary feeders feeds the filament down these four tubes into this kind of mixing unit, which has got a boosting drive motor, and that then sends it out to the printer. Now we need to disconnect each of those 11 cables into the main control board, and then pull off the control board. So the board itself has just got these two screws. I really like how absolutely all fasteners I've encountered on this machine so far have been either one of two Allen keys, which they supply. It drives me nuts on things like my Clarkson tool grinder that they used the optimum fastener for every location and you end up with like eight or 10 different tools needed just to do simple tasks with it. Right, clips on the ends here. And out it comes. Both the original and the replacement board they gave me are the same version. It's not some updated board or anything. Should it be necessary to replace a control board on a brand new printer? Just look at this 
board, right? It's probably got easily a hundred components on it and probably a thousand solder joins. Now, assuming that Bamboo Lab sells, I don't know, a million printers a year, that's about a billion solder joints a year that they're producing just on these boards alone and a hundred million components that they've installed. Now, let's take a look at the reliability curve of components. If this is failure rate and this is time, even the very best production, if you're doing a billion, a billion operations like soldering on these boards a year, you're going to have some failure rate, right? It may be tiny, it may only be like three parts per million or so, which is kind of normal, but this infant mortality is kind of to be expected. Over a very short period of time, the infant mortality failures are going to wash out. Hopefully, the manufacturer picks up on them, but some of them will always escape to the, out into the field. And then you'll have a Goldilocks period with a nice reliable unit. But over time, then you start getting things wearing out and the failure rate increases again. It kind of sucks if you're one of those very few people who picks up one of the initial failure units, but it's not something to really get cranked about. Now maintenance and reliability, this is called the bathtub curve. Now reinstall. What did I do with the small Allen key I was using as a pointer? Ah, I was sitting on it. I'll just connect that back up. All right, that's normal behavior. Forgot to pack some silica gel in there. Just load all slots to make sure they all work. Slot three is gonna get some generic see-through PLA, which I couldn't find any transparent PLA on the Bamboo Labs website. So this is just Amazon Basics. Oh, this doesn't fit. Hmm. Let's give it a go. Okay, well that's a fail. I didn't realize that. Bugger. Yeah, I guess I'm gonna have to respool this onto this one because this is basically finished. Okay, well position three can have the white PLA. And number four will get the pet G. I'll just unload this again. So I was talking to my contact at Bamboo Labs and they recommended one of these. It's just a filament dryer. Let's give that a go. I'll leave a link to it below. It's got a little hole in it to let your, uh, your filament come out through. Seems a pretty simple sort of device. Well that all seems pretty self-explanatory. Just put your filament in, set the type of material and how long you want it to go for. Now a lot of people use Gridfinity. I'm certainly not opposed to it. I think it makes a lot of sense for some things. These were bouncing around before. Now they've got their own position. That's really good. I'll definitely do some more Gridfinity in this drawer to make up something to support all of this stuff because that's also bouncing around. I don't think you need to overdo it with Gridfinity. To me there are some tools that just simply don't need a fixed location. When I served my time in the Air Force we didn't use individual tools. We had like shadow boards on the wall with all of the tools on them and at the end of every shift we had to go through and make sure that all tools were back on their shadow positions. If not, no one went home. They're not allowed to go flying with bits of tooling left in the plane. That's considered uncool. But here at home, I've got less need for such rigid tool control. You know, I know all my files are in this drawer, but I don't need a specific place for every single perp file to be always in exactly the same position. This is good enough. Same here, hammers, punches, that's good enough for me. That's enough order. I also don't feel much need for gridfinity for things like big micrometers and bore gauges and all that measuring tooling which you only use very irregularly and already comes in some form of a box. So up here I've also got a whole bunch more of my specialized measuring tooling. It's fine like that I think. 
One thing that is very cool is that Stu142 created a plugin for FreeCAD for Gridfinity. Add a solid to a new part, switch to the Gridfinity workbench, and then add something like a blank bin. Once it adds, you can go in and easily change its properties. Select, oh, let's say I only want this five, five units high. I, I don't need screw holes. I'll take the lip off the top of this one, but I want it to be two units by four. You know, how cool is that? So I already made one up where I did a boolean on it to cut out these center portions, and I'll send that off to the printer. That should work. Obviously, I don't always have such a long drill set up in it. Oh, I know what. I bought some magnets, so I might as well glue these in. I just put them on the corners. Also printed up the next bit of base. I messed this one up because I used a 20 millimeter instead of 25 millimeter slot, but actually still holds the tool quite nicely. Since doing single tool holders, it's not very efficient, and I've got quite a few ER25 tool holders. I decided to gang them up onto a larger Gridfinity so I can get four tool holders out of five wide instead of just uh, two, two and a half. You know, I think I need to go off on a bit of a rant about Gridfinity. Like if you look here, why would I need a holder for calipers? My calipers always live here on top of this little screwdriver set, one of which I've got up in my room because I was using it. Phillips screwdrivers, plain blade screwdrivers, electric screwdriver, small screwdrivers and weird ones. All seems pretty logical to me. I guess I can throw that out. Right, I'm totally sick of these collets just rattling around in a drawer. So it's time to make some sort of a holder for them. I did consider using Gridfinity. Uh, these are like 40 millimeters across, so the standard 42 would theoretically work, but they'd be really close together. I could do a non-standard, maybe 52. That would give me six wide in the drawer, but I already bought a piece of wood and I kind of wanted to do them in wood, so I'll do that.
Alright, now that glue's dried. To make those numbers pop a bit, I managed to borrow a bit of nail polish. Figured I wanted something kind of quick drying. Hope this sands back off nicely and leaves just the letters. Looks like the one I hit least hard with the punch is the one that looks best. Now this will just get sealed in. Right, how's it work? Actually looking at it, I think I got the numbers closer to the one above than the one below. So let's just change that around. In the meantime, my ER25 block has finished printing. I guess in summary, I really like Gridfinity. I think it's very useful for stuff like this, which is round, which rolls around, which should be somewhat precise and you don't want to get damaged. I'll definitely use it where it makes sense. However, there's other areas where other solutions are better, like this, and I'll use whichever solution seems most logical to me. Now I realize that this has been one of my lamer videos and it's important to train the YouTube algorithm to recognize lame videos. So I'd appreciate if you'd take the time to click the thumbs down twice to show just how bad this video is, okay? Thanks a lot. For my members and Patreons, I'm going to be doing another live stream, nine o'clock in the evening, Central European time, on the 1st of October. I'd really appreciate if you'd join me there.